This is my talk about rendering videos for Freak, uh, for Freaknik. Uh, who here knows of the program, the site YouTube? I've heard of it. Yeah. It's a little known, a little known place. So my talk is a talk about my talk is a talk that involves other talks. So I make it a talk section. So first off, why should you pay attention to me? I'm a husband. I'm a daddy. I'm a have a two degrees, a bachelor's in electrical engineering, a master's in software engineering. I'm from Huntsville, I'm a geek, and I pronounce it Puyu Puyu. So a little background on me, in high school I was on dial-up, on a separate computer, not connected to the internet at all. And I would come across these 700 megabyte AVI files. Well that's so cool! How'd they do that? Well it got into video compression. And so I read, and I read, and I read and read and read, and I learned that XVID and variable bitrate MP3s, that's awesome! More recently, X264 and AAC and MKV container is even awesomer. Uh, so video compression is fun for me. Video editing is just another step from it. And it's something I'm still learning. So a little bit of my background of the talk. I'm not actually going to recover the recording of these videos, just only how I put everything together. So for that, uh, SkyDogCon 2013 had uh, Iron Geek and Sky, SkyDog did a talk of convid, con video rig enhancements. And are there other ways of doing this? Of course. Uh, SkyDog and Iron Geek, they do, they use uh, what's called uh, Open Broadcaster, and they actually combine everything on the fly, as live. I'm doing this as a post-processing. -process, that way I can add fun little fade-ins, fade-outs, I can clip the audio, clip the video, that kind of little, those little tweaks. But mostly this is going to be a demonstration. So, you gotta have a meme. Yo dog, I heard you like talks. So I put a talk in a talk, so you can talk about a talk while you talk. <laughs> so a couple handy tools that I always recommend for video stuff. On the Windows side, Virtual Dub and Virtual Dub Mod, those are two separate programs. Uh, Audacity is of course open source. FFmpeg and FF Play, FF Player, that's always cool. Uh, not AVCon. Some people say, oh, that's what that, that's what Ubuntu uses, so I'm going to use that. <laughs> There's a big split. I can get into that uh, sidewise. Uh, M Player, always cool. Uh, AVI Demux is kind of like Virtual Dub for Linux, and is actually cross-platform and open source. VLC, everyone knows that. Uh, X264 is a great, is probably the best 264 uh, encoder. I do not recommend OpenShot, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I used to start with that, and then I found a bunch of issues with it, and so I switched over to a program called Caden Live. So I originally, yeah, so originally I started off, what the, okay, uh, there we go. I learned how to do everything on Windows using DVD Shrink, DVD Decryptor, AVI Synth, uh, Virtual Dub Mod, XVID, Lane, all that fun stuff. And eventually I jumped to the Linux uh, side of things in 2012, and I can do everything now in Make MKV and FFmpeg. Command line from as soon as after I get the source to my drive, I can do everything in FFmpeg. I'm not a big fan of one button, click it, all right, yeah, I have a backup. I'm not a big fan of that, but if I had to recommend what I'd say, handbrake, just because it actually gets into everything, all the all the settings. So now we're going to talk a second about OpenShot. Jonathan Thomas, a software engineer developer in Texas, wasn't happy with the video editing tools that existed for Linux in 2008, so he made one of his own. All right, no problem with that. He wanted it to be easy to use, powerful, stable, built on the Python, uh, GTK. MLT framework and FFmpeg and Blender. Okay, not a problem with that. It can work with AVC HD videos, which is what uh, the Canon video recorders actually report to, and a lot of what handheld camcorders do, and open source and free. Cool. So basically, he said, I'll make my own video editor with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> so, version 1.4 is the most recent one uh, at the time of writing this, and it's Linux only. Version 2 is in the works. There was a Kickstarter in April 2013. And it, it was fully kickstarted. Awesome. And he was pro promising new features. He was promising uh, cross platform, a total rewrite of the entire thing, uh, a new library at the heart. He was wanting Windows, Linux, and Mac. And it's still in development. There we go. All right. 
All right, so why I don't recommend OpenShot. So there's some known and unfixed bugs in it. It crashed often on me. The project, saving the project, not actually exporting, just saving the project file. It took a couple minutes for it to do. That shouldn't be happening. There was a single developer, which meant a single point of failure. So it's, for example, in July 2008, he said, my up next update will be in about 30 days. And his next update was February 2015. A little more than, than, uh, than 30 days. He was going through a house transition, so that was issue there. So, uh, some other issues was that there is no audio waveform. You have to listen to everything. Oh, shift it just a little bit. All right, go back and listen to it. Oh, no. Shift it a little bit more. It's very hard whenever you get two signals very close to each other. They can't tell which one is out of sync. It uses percentages and not pixels. So you'd say 53.99% over here rather than at pixel uh, 800 by 600. And in some cases, it would do x then y. And then it would do height and width, which is the y then x. So you have to pay attention to that. Uh, whenever you would actually open up the properties of the clip, you could say, all right, I want to clip off 10 seconds of this. Thinking, all right, this is great. I just need another 10 seconds off. It would actually go back to the original clip and cut off 10 seconds from the beginning, and all your audio synchronization is just toast. <laughs> there was no audio manual way of, uh, there was no automatic way of synchronizing the video, or the uh, audio and video as well. You have to literally do it all by hand. And, as a nerd, it would not compress variable bitrate single pass uh, uh, 264 CRF. You would actually have to export it to a massive file using PNGs and waves and then use FFmpeg to convert that down. What is the highest, best compression? I know you kind of geeked out about it earlier. What was it again? Uh, X264 encoder. Yeah. CRF is constant rate factor. It is basically a way of applying variable bit rate in a single pass. So with a uh, XVID you can do two passes and it would, the first pass was basically dummy and then the second pass it would use a stats file created in the first pass to say I can save some more bits right here, I can save some more bits here. With a CRF you say I want a constant rate factor of the default's 23. I want a constant rate factor of something of 18. Alright, cool. Higher file size, but you don't care about the file size. You want quality. Same, uh, it's actually inversely, so a lower number is a higher quality, higher number is a lower quality. So it's a very much a, I just want this quality, I don't care what the file size is. Another issue, uh, it can only do five minutes at a time for a single, bit, single frame. Now whenever I do all the title slides, I actually export it as a bitmap, and then, so every five minutes I'd have to have, to have a new thing, stretch it out as long as I could. Put a new file, stretch that out. Put a new file, stretch it out. So for an hour and a half long video, or for an hour long talk, <laughs> it got annoying. So I switched over to Kden Live. It uses the MLT framework as well, well, called the Media Loving Toolkit. It was initially developed in 2002. Last stable release was in 2014. Uh, they've actually been picked up by the KDE framework just recently. Uh, it's KDE, as the name kind of implies, but if you use Linux and uh, GNOME, you say, all right, well, add the PPA uh, Suneb KDN Live release uh, package. The most recently release is actually in the Debian Jesse repos, and just sudo apt-get install KDN Live. That's it. You know, it installs all the KDE libraries that it needs to actually run. And it can also work with ABC HD video, and it's also free. Cool. So my basic process was to keep in mind, junk in, junk out. You want to get the highest recordings that you can. So if you get like, a little cell phone video that's wiggling all around, you can stabilize it a little bit, you can tweak the audio a little bit, but the more process, the more processing is more time and it's just going to look worse. Um, video format, you just determine your resolution, whether it's interlaced or progressive, uh, your frame rates, uh, layout using algebra, woo! <laughs> uh, sync the video to audio, uh, resize everything you need, do the transitions, export it, move on to the next one. 
So for Freaknik 17 and 18, I did 1920 by 1080 resolution, progressive at 29.976 frames a second. Uh, that was the specs on the speaker Canon videos. So I just said, hey, I'll just go with that. Uh, that's a pretty standard uh, specs on that. And I really was wanting three frames in one. Uh, the slide video, a title slide, and a speaker video. And the title slide itself was actually created in PowerPoint, since they can use Slide Master, and then I just export everything as bitmaps. So what I had to work with in, seven, in Freaknik 17 was a 640 by 480 MP4, and uh, in Freaknik 18 I had 720 by 480 uh, MP4 for the slide videos. Speaker videos, 1080i or 1080p uh, Canon recorder and WAV file. General layout that I use for Freaknik, Freaknik 19. We're just doing a single recording, so we just are going to do two frames: a speaker video and then a title slide. Which I just cooked this up in five minutes in GIMP, but just uh, centered here, centered uh, vertically, and of course using algebra. Never thought you'd use that. <laughs> so basically, just coming out with speaker feed, speaker feed at 1280 by 720, and title slide at 640 by 480, and then offset so it's centered on the uh, y-axis, and then the title slide is bumped up right next to the speaker video. So with all that said, now time for the fun stuff. actually generate a script file, which then, if you're really tricky, and this a thought occurred to me last week, you can use a make file, and then do uh, tell it to uh, like make your all your all your files depends on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, blah, 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 and each one of those depends on something else if you really want to, and then the command is run the script file. Well, then you can say, all right, make all. Uh, dash, I think it's P for pro, or no, dash J for number of jobs. And you can say three jobs at once. Go. And it'll do three jobs at a time. Once one finishes, kick off the next one automatically. And then if you really get crazy, creepy, or crafty, you can put a shutdown script at the end. <laughs> so literally start it up, run the command, walk away, and then a day later, after it's done crunching, done. So, did you use this laptop to do that? I used this laptop to actually render all the videos, and Brimstone graciously provided me a box that uh, had a much better bandwidth connection than I had at home, and that I could uh, uh, just leave on and render and let it go for days on end if I really wanted to. So, this is the Caden Live interface. Over here is actually, can't see it just because of the resolution, but there's a uh, job history so you can tell it to undo. I'm going to right click and. Uh, oops, forgot one thing. So, all the videos that, uh, that we are going to use uh, coming out of the, can the uh, recorder is actual, are actually MPEG 2. Now, what's crazy about those is. Do an FF Pro M2. Uh, Probably can't see on the recording, but it just says that here's the MPEG file. It's a duration of 52 minutes. Starts there, bit rate of about 5 megabits. Stream zero is a video. It's 7, 2480, max bit rate of 9100 uh, kilobits, 30 frames a second, etc., etc. Audio is AC3 audio stereo. It's FF also Probe a tool that you had to install? FF Probe is a tool that comes with FFmpeg. Um, and with that, 
that if you actually compile it from the source, you can have access to the lib FDK AAC encoder, which is a much higher uh, bit rate, a much higher quality of an ACC encoder, AAC encoder than like a FAAC, which is the, the free audio. Yeah. I'm sorry. What, uh, what footage was this done with? Which camera? This was actually done with track one, I believe. Um, so it's just one of the ones that it's on has. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, this is the raw video itself. So, since it's actually MPEG-2, we can do something very crazy and concatenate them together. It doesn't sound like it works, but it does. So we're going to concatenate this uh, MPG. All right, so now, now we have, right here you see a 2 gigabyte video, 130 megabyte video, and then a 2.2 gigabyte video. They just stuff them two together. Now the way that M they can get away with this is in the MPEG container, every frame it has what the bitrate is, it has what it's in all the container, it has all the information you need to play it. So concatenating them together, not a problem. So you can actually do a variable frame rate with, M with MPEG. I hate MP4 because by default, FFmpeg puts the video container information at the very end. So if you've ever, ever had a, like your cell phone recording and it bombed on you, the video is unplayable because it didn't write the file that has the little tail part of it that actually has all of the information saying this is MP4, it's running as a X26 or a no, H264 encoder for a video and an AAC audio at this bit rate, at this frame rate. I mentioned that would happen fairly often that the phone dies in the middle of taking a video. Yes. Um, now there's tools of fixing it, yeah. but it's by default it's just a pain in the rear. Uh, MKV, not that way. MKV is also much, much freer with uh, in terms of what you can put inside the MP4 or what you can put inside of the container in terms of subtitles, uh, video codecs, audio codecs. So, and it's open source. MP4 is actually not, is not open source. So now we have our. Actually, let me do it. Demo. So you see, yep, there's the whole video. So see, it just goes straight into it. No problem. So that's what's fun about MPEG. All right, so now we're going to go back to our Caden Live. We're going to input our demo and our slide. Okay. Now we're going to drag this guy to the bottom there. Our slide here. Our hand magically rotate comes into the. And there's our. Do it every five minutes. Yeah, that got old really quick. Um, so here. split view, and you probably can't see this, but there's actually the source video here, and then there's the title slide here. It's just instead of overlaying them, it's actually uh, displaying every single video itself. So now, what I'm going to do is just keep waiting. Can you change their position? Is it just drag and drop? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you can kind of see a little bit on the waveform, which OpenShot did not have. Okay. So he started talking right about here. So I'm going to use the scissor tool right here. Cut. Delete that. Zoom back out. Scroll back over. Now he's right there. So we can, uh, what is it? Double click on it. And we can say position it at zero hours, zero minutes, and two seconds. 
All right, there it is. Likewise, I'll skip, go ahead and skip to the end. Okay, so uh, we'll cut the audio right there. We'll cut it right there. Bam. Done. All right, let's go ahead and resize him down. Close enough, we're going to be playing with him later. So we are back here at the beginning. So the first thing that I like to do is take this guy and add what's called a uh, transition, an affine transition. What that does is instead of displaying the two videos side by side and one on top of each other and can't really do anything with it, it actually combines the two. And control Z is built into this, so if you make a mistake, there's a history all along the right side here. Just because I'm paranoid, we're going to go ahead and save this. In my desktop and demo. I'm just going to call this uh, Sony, because it was from the a defense of whoever think, you think was behind the Sony Pictures Entertainment Breach. So now, I'm going to do some some cool stuff. Let's bring him back to what we're actually going to be seeing. And you're going to hear my... Uh, you can kind of see he is... Oh, the, there's the title slide right on top of the video slide. So now we want to, we want to take care of that. We want to... Go to this affine transition here, and we our first frame is at. Oops, that's not right. Uh, yeah, I can't really. I don't have to do this. Uh, at it processes what it calls. It goes everything off of keyframes. So Kaden Live is pretty slick about this. So at at say zero that is our first keyframe by default and there it's 20 by 10 8. all right cool it's just sitting there at t at two seconds let's put another keyframe here's right whenever we have our speaker starting at three seconds let's put another keyframe so now Want the title, the title slide, to be 640, 480 at 1280 by 300. So 1280 by 300, 640, 480. Done. Now, if you see, it'll actually interpolate between the keyframes how to where it'll go and their size and everything for you. Slick. All right. So now we have this overlaying on top of the speaker. So that's not very good. So now we're going to add a effect for uh, crop and transform, and it is uh, this one. No, nope, not that one. Effect crop and transform. It is pan and zoom. So we want to put the speaker video now at. Uh, 1280 by 300 at 300 pixels offset, and I'm sorry, that's the title slide. Uh, at far left over it, so zero pixels, and 180 down at 1280 by 720. So 1280, 720, zero, and 180. All right, cool. So now we have this sliding in. Now let's add an effect fade from black, which is the video portion. We're going to make this one second long. Okay. And we're also going to add a fade in, which is the audio portion. And we're going to make this one second long as well. So now we have our title slide for two seconds. And then it starts panning down. 
and as you hear my laptop, get, 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 get. this is an i7 quad core processor. So it's doing all of this in CPU near real time. So it's a lot to process. And it's processing 1080p video. So now we have a fade in from audio and video lasting one second, and then the title slide sliding across. Cool. Let's go ahead and skip to the end. And let's pretty much do the same thing. So we have. Oops. Oh, yeah. Open shot also, if you hit end, would actually it would do something different. It would uh, go to the end of the entire project. So if you stack multiple videos on top of each other, or right after each other, it goes to the very end of it. Kaden Life, if, if you hit end while selecting a, a slot, a picture, or a, an object, it'll actually go to the end of that object. Much more intuitive, in my opinion. Okay, so we have now. We have him, we have some applause, and then that's it. So let's extend out the slide for another three seconds. So 55 minutes and 43 seconds, so five is what it was. Pinch it to 46, uh, oh five. Actually, let's do 45. All right, that's easy. Make our strip and drag out our A fine transition. Same thing, effect, fade, fade to black. Lasting one second. And effect, fade out, lasting one second. And these right here are all the filters that are applied to the selected clip. So right here is just the actual title slide, nothing there. Right here is where all the uh, properties are for the A-fine transition, and then right here is where the, all of the filters are applied to the slide video, or the speaker video. So now I got this ugly jump, fades out nicely, and then goes bang. Well, let's do what we did before. So let's select our, select end there, cool. So now let's add a new keyframe right here. And let's add a new keyframe uh, two seconds ago. 41. Cool. All right, keyframe added. Everything's happy there. This little button here is our go to the next keyframe that we've just added, which is now at the end. And let's add one in between. 42. So right here is where we want to start the fade in, the start the fade out. Or right when the title slide to come in and right whenever the fade out on the audio and fade to black start. So go to the last keyframe and want this to take up the entire thing. 1920 by 1080. And Kaden Live is nice enough where you can tell it to keep the aspect ratio. So in the case, this is a uh, 800 by, or it's a 800 by 600 <coughs> bit, uh, bitmap. So that's a 4 by 3 ratio, not, and 1920 by 1080 is a 16 by 9. So if it, the aspect ratio wasn't kept, it just looked like, like it was stretched. Kind of like how this is not a circle, but it's an oval. All right. So now we have the slide out. And that's that. Let's save it all again. You can script this. I have not found a good way, just because every portion of the, like for every, sometimes the different spots. Yeah, you'd have to manually say it's all right here, here, and then you're already halfway done. So might as well just click, 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 click. You're done. So now we want to click on our render button. We also have that other problem where. Some of us speakers don't flip our slides exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, if we incorporate other material, uh, sometimes the video feed cut out and we we're left with just audio. So in that case, do something with uh, the title slide, make it bigger, do something with audio editing. So uh, I didn't, didn't, didn't really demonstrate this, but Caden Live also does have a ton of audio filters. Am 
not sure you can see some of this, but uh, like using the socks thing, uh, socks. It's a program or a filter in itself. The noise removal, audacity. Yes, it does have noise removal. I, at least I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Don't see that in there. Um, but it's also easy to take the uh, audio itself out and put it into audacity, and there's uh, audio tracks. You can overlay that right on. And you can add as many audio tracks as you want and as many video tracks as you want. So now we're going to render this, and we want to do a file render. Cool. Using MPEG-4, or MP4, the H.264 AAC high profile. Encoder threads, a sure. Video quality, this is the CRF I was talking about earlier. Uh, by default, uh, just uh, FFmpeg does 23 CRF, so it's not bad quality. 20 is better. What's, it, what's encoder threads? Eight encoder four. threads is how many threads that for Caden uh, Live and uh, the MLT and all this stuff to actually use on the processor. So you can spe specify, I only want to use two threads total. Same as two cores? Exactly. Or, okay. Or if you're running, uh, if you're going to run eight, uh, or if you're going to have, uh, what, 18 uh, speakers to go at once, and you just want to limit it to two cores and then be doing two or three at the same time, you can do it that way. Yes? I'm sorry, is the one you're about to do, is it, uh, you said it's high profile, but alpha main profile as well? Mm. Or do you just do everything high profile? I just do everything high profile. We use it C, 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 uh, CBR? Yeah, you're just doing it, uh, you're doing it variable or CBR? Variable bit rate. Uh, just that way, if there's something very static, you don't need uh, five megabits to compress the same image 20 times or, you know, for every 20 seconds. You can you know, apply much less bit rate to that, and ideally get some bit rate savings. Is YouTube forgiving as far as taking multiple types of files? I never tr tried this. Before. YouTube is pretty cool about uh, multiple file types. It likes MP4s. It likes MKVs. Uh, it likes. It's pretty good about a lot of things. Uh, YouTube though it's recommends. Like all those windows. Yeah. Like, from my understanding, YouTube's backend actually does use FFmpeg to handle and encode all the videos. Okay. So, I find it kind of funny. Uh, but, like, uh, YouTube's uh, help file, or help page, actually suggests encoding everything at 8 megabits a second. So, just throw all the bits at it. Just throw all as many bits as you want. That'll fix it. That'll figure it out. Which code? I'm sorry? Using which code in? Uh, the 264 of some kind. So this will actually use the X264 codec. And I'm going to tell it to use CRF of 18. So a pretty good quality. Uh, 160 kilobits a second is pretty standard for AAC audio. Uh, 128 kilobit is pretty much bare minimum for stereo. Uh, the way FFmpeg describes it as 64 bits uh, per second per channel. So a uh, stereo channel, 128 kilobits at least for a 5.1 sur uh, sounds 5.1 surround track. You, that's actually six channels. So you want uh, I think it's 320 kilobits a second. So, all right, we're happy with that. We're gonna output file. We're gonna change this to. We're gonna put this in. Would that be 384 instead of 320? Six channel, six times 64. <coughs> yeah, that sounds okay. about right. Okay. I did, I'm, I'm an engineer. I can't do the math without a pencil and paper. Not why you're, <laughs> you're busy with other things. Slide <laughs> So, demo. Uh, let's just call this uh, Sony. This is going to be our output file, Sony.mp4. Now, again, like I said before, we can either choose to generate to render the file now or generate the script. So, let's generate a script. Let's go back and put this in our desktop, Freaknik 19, demo, Sony. Okay, cool. Now we can close this. So now, Uh, 
screen because that's awesome. So we're just going to do back period forward slash Sony dot shell. We'll go over here. You can see it's actually pretty bad. Let me full screen this. So you can see it's hitting, uh, going across the course pretty well. It is uptime's not terrible. It's coming up on one. It's using about 230% CPUs, and we got our all of our threads here. Okay, so now we have it chugging away. It's just chugging. How long will it take to read? The that's a very good question. Depends on the CPU. Depends on the number of threads. Depends on what the hard drive usage. It depends on so many other things. And that costs what? It's an hour long. I'm sorry. That's an hour long. Uh, yeah, it's about an hour long. About four and a half, five hours. About four and a half, five hours, maybe a little bit more. So, That's so without a high-end, powerful video card, the graphics card doing a lot of parsing. Caden Live, from what I've seen, it likes CPUs. It likes to run entirely in CPUs, and it's because it's doing a lot of the rendering in CPU. But then also X two six four, even though there's some GPU optimizations, it doesn't speed it up that much. So, we're running this. All right, let's go ahead That may change in the future. Maybe, I hope so, yes. So, we, oops, so now, all right. It says it's finished, because I, I killed it. So now let's do VLC Sony.mp4. Nice pretty slide out. And it's only 31 seconds long because I killed it earlier. But this is what it, it'll do. Can you put that up on YouTube? Yes. I just question why put the slide over there. I mean, you can see more information. You just kind of got rid of it. I could do that. Yeah, I like that better. <laughs> I just so I can see it. Right. Well, it, it's just kind of nice to be like, oh, yeah. Who is talking? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can it's do that. A, Brandon can support it. Let's go. Adding like captions, Stephen. Is it easy to like put a text at the bottom, or is that, or, or would you have to like make a JPEG or something? And, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's so like uh, through the like entire thing. Like caption, or, or, or in like in this case, if you just wanted to put the title, so you just, is it like just like a text box? A you can type it in. Yeah, like a titling tool, I guess you could say. Okay, so you're probably not. And I've never tried it, so well, you this is a time when you flip through stuff on it. I really am. Uh, uh, your effects. So we can, here, we can actually do a, add a, um, uh, let's try, title clip. You make it there. It's a, let's see, you can just, okay. Uh, and, and that would work, you would pop that in one of your videos and just, Line it up along with the others. I yep. See. Okay. So we can say, let me try this again. Add a title clip. And, and that would be transparency, I'm guessing. That's what it is now. Okay. All right. So that is tiny. Let's go ahead and. Ah, there's the font. 100. All right. More. 200. It says, I am a turtle. All right, title clip. Put this right here. There might be some tweaks. So, very cool. Uh, the A fine will actually have to go to video three. I hadn't messed with it too much. There's a lot of tweaks that go into all of this. How did you find Kid Live? Google. <laughs> Google. I had a, I looked into Blender a little bit, which actually has a video editor. It's yeah. not just a 3D renderer. Uh, there's Kaden Live. There was OpenShot. There is Lives. Um, Those um, are free open source Lightworks. Lightworks, yes. Uh, but Lightworks is actually technically free. Technically free? For 30 days. Well, but you can was, get the... Now that was part of my 
my talk, Lightworks, if you only want to render 720, right. for it's YouTube. Free. For YouTube. It's for, well, you yeah. can do it or whatever, yeah. but yeah. you're yeah. only getting 720p for free. Right. And then, Wave, if you've, if other you've, formats. If you've got something like what I'm doing that's uh, going to be about two hours long and I want it super high, or I want it 1080 and all that, I'll get it all done first and then get a one month license and render it in. Right. And, uh, right. And for $30. Right. And, uh, and for titling, I cheat and use a bit of abandonware called uh, uh, Movie Maker 6.0. And uh, putting titles on stuff and, and any kind of wordy graphics, it's really super easy. Yeah, yeah, I, I have moved Steve in. It was totally my fault because I was back to that stuff about making a trailer maybe for this year. And I, I there are certain audio clips from past years and certain speakers I wanted to like feature like make a commercial. Yeah, this know. is all great. Yeah, this this is this is ideal. And Lightworks is good for that too. And the thing with Lightworks that I noticed is putting any kind of uh, wording or anything typing or lettering or anything on the screen isn't as good there as it is at, at Movie Maker. Um, the, um, but now Blender, you can do just absolutely phenomenal stuff with that if you can figure out how to use it. Yeah. It's so complicated. It is. Oh, um, yeah. But now the Linux guys, Blender looks like it's got a real Linux background because just the way everything works it yeah. looks like it came out of Linux. And I tried learning Blender a little bit, but it was over my head. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's equivalent to Lightwork. I mean, it's not going to be better than Lightworks would say. Lightwork. Oh, I'll well, no, know. So Blender's more. That's what they made the special effects with the Batman. Oh, so, okay. It's a great. Oh, I don't know that one because it's. It's not that expensive, to be honest. It might as expensive as special effects. I think also Blender. It's $27,000. You can use is, Blender is Render or friendly Cycles. Yeah, you can, you can use Cycles Render or Blender Render. And I know enough about those to know the names of them. That's what they're actually doing. I created one effect of Blender, and I still can't get my background alpha to so just be alpha. I, I would say, what were you creating, Steve, for, for the videos this year? Because we only had the one feed, or maybe we need to figure out a way to keep the oh, no, slides as big as possible. Right. See, also, a nice cool thing about Cave Live is, oh, nice. you can actually put it under the speaker's podium. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That would work, because there's nothing going on there. You can just leave the slides up on the I don't know if I was paying that much attention to the bank because I didn't have any money in it. So. <laughs> and I'm a number nerd. I'm an engineer, so yeah, I'd, I'd play with it to get it full and He's a super there. Cool but, yeah, I mean, you can play around a little bit with it. Well, thanks very much for showing this. This is something I didn't know even better got started. So, so. Can you play a lot? Play that one more time?